Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to give a homegoing celebration for our dear, dearly beloved brother, Mr. Jeffrey Barnum. The family has outlined a program, and we do understand and realize that we have to follow the guidelines of the pandemic COVID-19 guidelines. So therefore, my brothers and my sisters, we still want to have a celebration. Amen? Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to get ready for a prayer, then a scripture, then reflections, then a musical meditation, then words of comfort for your truth. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal Father, we come now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you for this day, God. We thank you for this opportunity just to praise and to worship you, Lord. Father God, I speak blessing upon this bereaved family, Lord. Now, God, I thank you because you are God all by yourself, and beside you there is no other. Now, Father God, let them know that there is no earthly sorrows that heaven cannot heal. And God, we'll be so careful to give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name we do pray. Let every child that know they are a child of God shout, Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading for today we be coming from First Thessalonica, four chapter thirteen through the eighteenth verse. And it reads thus But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. Concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. But this we say unto you by the words of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. First Thessalonians 4, chapter 13 through the 18th verse. May God continue to bless his word. Amen. At this particular time, we will have reflections. Amen. And please, ma'am, please, sir, try to minimize your reflections. If you will. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, some of you may know me as TC. This is my, my uncle. Um, I've been away for a while, so I didn't get to spend a lot of time with, with Uncle Jeffrey, uh, with Chandra, and, and actually with all the family. And it's unfortunate that these are things that bring us together, but I'd just like to say that um, I miss my Uncle Jeffrey and I miss all my family. Work has called me away, but you guys are always in my prayers and I appreciate that uh, you guys still include me in everything, even though I haven't been around. And Chandra, I love you. And uh, 
If you ever need anything. We're, we're cousins, so I always got you, okay? And uh, I just want everyone to have a wonderful day. And, and again, thank you for including me. Come on and put those blessed hands together for our Lord. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Amen. At this time, we will have a musical meditation.
Eternal Father, now we come at this hour. This assignment that you have given us, Lord. Father God, I definitely decrease that you shall and will increase. Father God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength, my redeemer. O oh God, that you would bless me indeed. Enlarge my territory. Then, Father, let your hands be with me. Keep me from evil that I may not cause pain. Eternal Father, we come now to say thanks, God. Father God, we thank you because you are so wonderful. And you say it in your words, you're God, and beside you there is no other. Now, Father God, we thank you, we praise you, and we worship you. In Jesus, who is the Christ, we do pray. Let every child that know their child of God shout amen. Come on and put those blessed hands together for our Lord. Come on, people of God. If you love God, come on, give God some praise. Hallelujah. How many of you truly love God in the house? How many of you truly, truly love God? How many of you have God in your heart and in your spirit, in your mind, in your soul? Because now we at a point where we are eulogizing one of our beloved brothers. And one thing I do know, that earth have no sorrows, that heaven cannot heal. Amen? Amen? Even though we're not in a building called the sanctuary, your body is known as a sanctuary. So therefore, you ought to be ready to still give God some praise and give God some glory, even in the midst of what's going on today. The Bible simply tells us in all things, yes, sir. give God thanks, Amen. give him glory. Amen. Amen. I solicit your prayers and your amens. We're going to do a quick drive-by so we can get out of your way. Amen. My beloved brother... Jeffrey Barnum, we all grew up together up on what they call Factory Town up on the hill. And him and I, we always used to play in Eugene and Jeffrey. Uh, I think they were the greatest basketball players on the hill at that time. So every time we picked a team, I was legit at the time. So every time they picked a team, I always wanted Gene to pick me on his team because I know we were going to win. So therefore, that was some of my fondest memories of Jeffrey. Now today, we come to celebrate his home going. But there isn't anything I could do right now, or there isn't anything I could say that's going to determine where Jeffrey's final destination is going to be. So what I will do today is to try to give you a word of comfort to try to help you get prepared when you come to your demise. Amen? Amen? So therefore, my brothers and my sisters, let's have some church. Amen. Amen. I will be reading from 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. And I won't be that long. Beginning at the first verse, and it reads, For we know that if our earthly house this tent is destroyed. We have a building from God. A house. Somebody look at a neighbor and say, a house. Amen. Not made with hand, eternal in the heavens. Then verse 6 say, therefore, somebody shout, therefore. therefore. We are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in this body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. We are confident. Yes. Well, please rather be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. 
Amen. That's another shout amen about. Amen. Today, if I leave you a word of conference and I have to give you a title, I would have to say, this house is not my home. If you will, look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, this house, point at yourself, this house, this tabernacle is not my home. Come on and give the Lord just another hand clap of praise. If you're happy and you know it, give God a little bit of praise. Amen. When we go through things in life, there has to be a transition from where you are right now to where God has assigned for you to be. We go through life and this transition is what we have to prepare ourselves for. When we are born, normally it takes nine months from conception to birth. Understanding you have been given a house to live in. Not something man built, but a shell that God created and he called a body. Are you with me? This shell contains flesh, water, blood, a spirit, and a soul. While here on earth, we are commanded to take care of this house. The problem is, we have a few dilemmas. We do not take care of our house properly. Well, some of us have 50 houses. Some of us have nasty, nasty houses. Some of us even have dirty houses. Some of our houses are contaminated with the fruit of the flesh. What do you mean, prophet, the fruit of the flesh? Envious, drunkenness, jealousy, adultery, fornication, witchcraft. All of those are fruits of the flesh. You cannot enter into the gates of the kingdom of heaven when you practice the fruit of the flesh. You can, can't call yourself a child of God when you gossiping and talking about your neighbors in a negative way. Jesus said, I'll go and prepare a place for you. Wherever I am, ye may be also. How many of you today want to go where Jesus is? How many of you truly want to go where the Lord is? When it comes time for you to come to the end of your road, how many of you truly want to go where Jesus is? I was about to say touch a nail, but I know we can't touch each other. So I said, look at a name and say, this house is not my home. Where the Bible said, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. But your house can't be contaminated. Well, I tell you how you can clean your house. Well, you can't clean this house with bleach. Come on, you can't clean this house with Ajax or Condit. Uh -huh. What you have to do in the way that you have to clean your house is love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy heart, thy spirit, and thy strength. Then again, you have to love thy neighbor as you love thyself. The Bible says in Mark 12, 30 and 31, these are the greatest commandments of all. See, it doesn't matter how many houses you accumulate while you're here on earth. How many automobiles you have parked in your yard. Yes, sir. It doesn't matter how many degrees you accumulate or how much land you can buy. It doesn't matter how cute, how handsome, or how fine you think you are. Because the Bible says heaven and earth shall pass away. But my word will always stand. Yes, sir. What does it profit a man to gain the world and turn around 
and lose his soul. You ought to look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, this house is not my home. Well, Sister West, we might as well have a little church out here. I think I feel a little churchy right about now. So I feel the Holy Ghost. See, I can't live my life trying to be like everybody else. I got to live my life so I can please God. See, I can't live my life uh, trying to be like you, you, or you. Uh, I got to live my life uh, so I can please God. Uh, see, I might have your proclivities. Uh, I might have your tendencies. Uh, I might even have your predilections. Uh, but I still uh, have to please God. Uh, see, one thing I do know. Uh, that the Bible said, uh, they that wait upon the Lord, uh, yes, he shall renew all of that strength. Uh, you're going to have to mount up with wings like eagles. Uh, I wish I had some help out here. You're going to have to mount up with wings like eagles. Uh, this is why Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And wherever I am, you shall be there also. How many of you are ready to go with Jesus? How many of you want your new home where Jesus said you can have? See, the Bible simply tells us, they that wait upon him, he shall renew that strength. Can I get a witness in an amen? See, one thing I do know, the Jesus that I'm talking about, he is the prince of peace. He is a way maker. He is a bridge over to the waters. He is my rock in a weary land. The Jesus I'm talking about. One day they took him up on a hill called Calvary. After they had beat him upon recognition. Once they got him up on that hill, they had hung him high and then they stretched him wide. But after they done all that, they nailed nails in his hand and they had put a nail in his feet. Uh, but even after all of that, uh, one of the centurion soldier, uh, he took a spear and jabbed him in the side. Uh, and the Bible says, uh, after he jabbed him in the side, uh, out comes screaming water and blood. Uh, good God Almighty. Uh, but the good thing about it, uh, he didn't even say a mumbling word. Uh, give somebody a high five and say, neighbor, uh, this house uh, is not my home. Uh, but after they hung in there. The best thing about it, three days later, on a Sunday morning, early on a Sunday morning, he got up. Ain't that good news? He got up. Brother Gene, not with some power, not with little power, but with all powers in his hand. Good God Almighty, look at a neighbor and say, this house is not your home. I tell you this, that was the late, great Sam Jolly Sr. said, take no pride in a crowing hen. Don't ride a stubby mule, no matter what, how, or when. Never argue with a fool. You may be the biggest fool in the world, but no one will ever know it unless you act the fool. And I leave you with this. The past is history. The future, it is a mystery. Well, the present, that is a gift from God. Mm -hmm. This is why they call it the present. Enjoy your gift, enjoy your moment, enjoy your present by loving your family, even loving your enemy. God bless you, God loves you, and so do I. And the prophet, God bless. Say amen. amen. Can we give Prophet Carr a hand clap of praise for the word of God? Amen. I have a presentation here from Miss Thelma Denise West and her brother, Mr. Robert Eric West. The 
flag says with the poem on it and a picture of Mr. Jeffrey. And the title say, Only God Knows Why. God saw you were getting weary, so he did what he knew was best. He came and stood beside you and whispered, come and rest. You bid no one a last farewell, not even a goodbye. And you were gone before we knew it, and only God knows why. So there is nothing to fear, for God has erased your pain and taken you to a better place where there is sunshine and never rain. In loving memory of Mr. Jeffrey Barnum, sunrise, March the 8th, 1961, sunset, June 12th, 2020. We'd like to present these plaques to Mr. Barnum's daughter. Would you kindly lift your hand? Michelle. Amen. Compliments of West Mortuary. Give the Lord a hand clap and let's give this family a hand clap of love. Can you just send some love that way? Give a hand clap of love. Thank you, Mr. Darren. The hymn writer said, God me on that great Jehovah. I'm a pilgrim through this barren land. But I am weak, but thou am mighty. Hold me with that powerful hand. When the hymn writer goes on to say, bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. This on last Friday, they said that Mr. Jeffrey drove truck. They had gone this last mile of the way. They tell me that Jesus died on the Friday. Before he got ready to go to be back to this fall, Jeffrey told the Lord Jesus, when you come into your paradise, you remember me. So today, that's all we can do for Mr. Jeffrey today. If you remember the good times, the bad times, but most of the time, the good all the way out there today. So that now that he has gone and left, he has left you from his presence, but left you today in the hand of the Lord. So on behalf of this family, for your flowers, your call, your visit to the home, your prayer, but most of all, your presence here today. This family would like to thank you for you for taking out of your busy schedule to come here to celebrate the home going with their love. And they would also like to thank the pastor, Paul, and to all of you and from the West March of Mary staff, which is Mr. Robert Eric, which is our president, and Mr. Evan Denise, which is our God president, we the West March of Mary staff. We would like to take this opportunity to thank you for entrusting your love on with us. And I always remember, continue to look to the hill that's coming down here for all of our here. Back to the earth with the earth has And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there were no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven prepare as a bride or door for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. Some of us have shared thoughts in memory through the passing years, a wonderful companionship and fellowship with our faithful brother, Brother Jeffrey Barnum. We cherish the many blessings and hollow memories that come to us in these moments. Jeffrey's faithfulness, friendship, and concentrated life will continue with radiant and testimony in our life. In the name of Jesus Christ, who he loved and served, we commit his body to rest. Knowing that his spirit is with the Lord in heavenly houses. 
what Mother Earth had given to us, let it return to Mother Earth. Therefore, I commit this body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. In so doing, we rest our hearts in fresh confidence upon the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to life through Jesus, who is the Christ. Let us pray. Eternal Father, we come now once again in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, I speak blessing upon this family, my Lord. Father God, give them the strength. Give them the desires of their heart. Give them what they need to get through this here process, Lord. Father God, we as, as, as friends and as neighbors, let us be have a heart to just surround them and give them the, the love that they need in order for them to get past this situation. But God, in the midst of this situation, let them know to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Oh, we know that they love their beloved brother, their father, their grandfather. But we have to understand and realize that if he live a life that is pleasing in your eyesight, it is a celebration. Because the Bible simply tells us, at the time of a birth, that shall be crying. But when one leaves this earth, it is a celebration. So I give you all the glory. I give you all the praise. I give you all the honor. Now let there be restoration. Let there be unity. Let there be goodness among this family. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. Celebrate the home going that way. You do not say goodbye.